Hello dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the Blessed Messages for You channel. Before we dive into the depths of Psalm 83, I'd like to ask a small favor. If you appreciate our content and want to receive more inspiring messages, please click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Your interaction is valuable, so don't hesitate to leave a comment and a like on this video. Now let's explore this powerful passage of scripture together. Psalm 83 is a passionate prayer, an urgent cry to God in times of adversity. Written by Asaph, this psalm transports us to a moment of great danger in Israel's history when enemies conspired to destroy God's chosen people. But beyond being a historical record, this psalm offers us timeless lessons about trust, faith, and divine sovereignty in the midst of tribulations. Asaph begins his cry with words that resonate in our soul. O God, do not remain silent. Do not turn a deaf ear. Do not stand aloof, O God. How many times have we felt this way in our own lives? Facing seemingly insurmountable challenges, we cry out for a divine response. This verse reminds us that we can and should be honest with God in our prayers. He is not offended by our urgency or desperation. On the contrary, he invites us to pour out our hearts before him. The psalmist continues, detailing the threat Israel faces. See how your enemies growl, how your foes rear their heads. This is not a distant or hypothetical battle. Asaph sees the real and imminent danger. Similarly, the challenges we face in our Christian life are not abstract. They are real, tangible, and often frightening. But just as Asaph took his concerns directly to God, we are invited to do the same. In the following verses, Asaph details the conspiracy against God's people. With cunning they conspire against your people. They plot against those you cherish. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation, so that Israel's name is remembered no more. This passage reveals something profound about the nature of spiritual opposition. Israel's enemies were not just seeking territorial conquest or riches. Their ultimate goal was to eradicate God's people and, by extension, God's name itself. This reality echoes in our days. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians 6.12 that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. When we face opposition in our Christian walk, whether through direct persecution, temptations, or challenges to our faith, we must recognize that there is a spiritual dimension at play. Asif then lists Israel's enemies. With one mind they plot together, they form an alliance against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Byblos, Ammon and Amalek, Philistia, with the people of Tyre. Even Assyria has joined them to reinforce Lot's descendants. This enumeration is not just a historical record. It's an honest acknowledgement of the gravity of the situation. Asaph doesn't minimize the threat, nor does he try to hide it from God. There's a powerful lesson here for us. Often in our prayer life, we might be tempted to soften our concerns, thinking we should only present positive thoughts to God. But Psalm 83 shows us that we can and should be completely honest with God about the challenges we face. He already knows our struggles and wants us to trust him enough to share them openly. After acknowledging the threat, Asaph turns to history, recalling God's past victories. Do to them as you did to Midian, as you did to Sisera and Jabin at the river Kishon, who perished at Endor and became like dung on the ground. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, all their princes like Zeba and Zalmunna, who said, let us take possession of the pasture lands of God. This appeal to history is not mere nostalgic remembrance, it's a declaration of faith. Asaph is essentially saying, God, just as you acted powerfully in the past, act again now. This reminds us of the importance of recalling God's works in our own lives. When we face challenges, it's crucial to remember how the Lord has delivered us on previous occasions. These memories strengthen our faith and give us courage to face present battles. 
The psalmist then makes a series of bold requests to God, make them like tumbleweed, my God, like chaff before the wind. As fire consumes the forest or a flame sets the mountains ablaze, so pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your storm. Cover their faces with shame, Lord, so that they will seek your name. At first glance, these words may seem harsh, even vindictive. However, it's crucial to understand the context and the heart behind these pleas. What Asaph is really asking for is the manifestation of divine justice. He recognizes that only God has the right and ability to judge with perfect righteousness. Moreover, notice the ultimate purpose of this judgment, so that they will seek your name, Lord. Even amid requests for divine intervention against enemies, the heart of God and the psalmist yearns for redemption. The ultimate goal is not destruction, but that all would recognize God's sovereignty and glory. What a powerful lesson for us today. When we face opposition or injustice, our response should not be motivated by personal revenge, but by a desire to see God's justice and truth prevail. And more than that, we should pray for the transformation of those who oppose God and His people. Asaph continues his prayer. May they ever be ashamed and dismayed. May they perish in disgrace. Let them know that you, whose name is the Lord, that you alone are the Most High over all the earth. Again, we see here the balance between the cry for justice and the desire for all to recognize God's sovereignty. This conclusion of the psalm is a powerful declaration of faith. No matter how dark the situation may seem, how formidable the enemies, how impossible the odds, God remains on the throne. He is the Most High, the Sovereign over all nations, all powers, all circumstances. This truth is the anchor that sustains our faith in times of storm. Psalm 83 also teaches us about the importance of perseverance in prayer. Asaph doesn't offer a timid or hesitant prayer. He pours out his heart before God with brutal honesty and unwavering faith. He persists in his cry, confident that God hears and responds. This persistence in prayer is a recurring theme in Scripture. Jesus taught us to pray with perseverance through the parable of the persistent widow in Luke 18. The Apostle Paul exhorts us to pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Psalm 83 is a vivid example of this persistence in action. But note that Asaph's perseverance is not an empty repetition of words. Each verse of the psalm reveals a new facet of his plea, a new reason for God to intervene. This is a vital lesson for our own prayer lives. We should pray with persistence, but also with purpose and passion, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide our intercessions. Another notable aspect of this psalm is how it balances the urgency of the present moment with an eternal perspective. Asaph is deeply concerned with the immediate threat to Israel, but his final gaze is fixed on God's eternal glory. He asks for divine intervention, not just for Israel's temporary salvation, but so that the Lord's name may be exalted among all nations. This tension between the immediate and the eternal is something we all experience in our faith journey. Often we are so consumed by our immediate concerns that we lose sight of the bigger picture of God's plan. Psalm 83 challenges us to maintain both perspectives, to seek God in our present needs, but always with our eyes fixed on His eternal purpose. Reflecting on Psalm 83, we are challenged to examine our own faith. When we face opposition or difficulties, what is our first reaction? Do we immediately turn to God in prayer, like Asaph? Or do we first seek human solutions? Do we trust in God's sovereignty even when we cannot see His hand at work? This psalm invites us to a deeper faith, an unwavering trust in God's character and power. It reminds us that just as God protected and vindicated His people in the past, He remains faithful today. Circumstances may change, enemies may look different, but Asaph's God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As we conclude our reflection on Psalm 83, may we carry with us these eternal truths, the importance of persistent prayer, trust in God's sovereignty, 
the balance between our immediate concerns and God's eternal perspective, and the certainty that the Lord is indeed the Most High over all the earth. May this psalm inspire us to seek God with renewed fervor in our own lives, confident that He hears our prayers and acts in His perfect timing. May we, like Asaph, have the courage to pour out our hearts before God, expressing our deepest concerns, but always with a spirit of submission to His sovereign will. And remember, just as God did not remain silent in the face of Asaph's cry, He is not indifferent to our pleas either. He is working, even when we cannot see or understand His ways. Our part is to trust, pray, and remain faithful, knowing that in the end, His name will be exalted and His justice will prevail. May the Lord grant us the grace to live in light of these truths, facing each challenge with unwavering faith and renewed confidence in His sovereignty and love. Before we wrap up, I'd like to thank all of you for dedicating your time to this reflection on Psalm 83. If this message touched your heart or brought any revelation to your life, please share your experience in the comments below. Your perspective might be exactly what someone else needs to hear today. Don't forget to subscribe to our Blessed Messages for You channel to receive more inspiring content like this. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. If this content was a blessing to you, help us reach more people by giving it a like and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, every time you interact with our content, whether through likes, comments, or shares, you're helping to spread God's word and touch more lives. Your participation is crucial for the growth of this online ministry. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Until the next video, stay in the grace and love of our Lord. God bless you richly.